He was killed, Sergeant Hannah. He was killed at the bottom of the hill. A, a damn good soldier he was. A nice person. It should not have happened to him. He was shot in the head. He was shot in the head. I still see that every, every day I see him. Actions followed until the United Nations forces established an 80-mile perimeter around the port of Pusan. If that can be held, all the rest may be recovered. Recent news indeed has been encouraging, though the struggle looks like being long and fierce. Lieutenant General Walton H. Walker was the commander of U.S. and South Korean forces during the summer of 1950. He was trying to rebuild his four divisions which Army High Command had stripped of many supporting units during a reorganization of Army structure. It was during this rebuilding process that the North Korean People's Army launched a surprise attack south of the 38th parallel on June 25, 1950. U.S. President Harry S. Truman decided to intervene. By July 2nd, the 1st of Walker's division was ready for action. He called his newly assembled army the 8th Army in Korea. As American units dribbled into Korea, the North Korean People's Army steamrolled Walker's meager forces made up of the 24th Infantry Division and the Republic of Korea Army back down the South Korean Peninsula. Walker assumed operational control of the badly battered and poorly equipped divisions of the Republic of Korea Army. Three days later, the North Korean People's Army pushed the 24th Infantry Division from the key city of Taejeon, capturing Divisional Commander Major General William Dean. The newly arrived 1st Cavalry Division lost Yongjon on July 25, 1950. The NKPA forces successfully overran the South Korean Peninsula except for ground northwest of Busan and the extreme southeastern edge of South Korea. If the American and South Korean Army could not hold their ground, it would be not long before Walker's 8th Army would be hurled into the ocean and South Korea would be lost to the North Korean Communists. At this time, Walker had under his command the 24th and the 25th Infantry Divisions, the 1st Cavalry Division, and the only reinforcements he would get later would be the 2nd Infantry Division, a brigade of Marines, and a regimental combat team. Walker ordered his struggling forces to withdraw behind the natural barrier of the Nakton River. By August 1st, the Pusan perimeter was an approximate 100 by 50 mile rectangle in the southeast corner of Korea. Walker made great use of his ability to operate in the inner lines. The U.S. 5th Air Force maintained control of the air, which meant Walker could move forces within the perimeter during daylight hours without fear of detection. The North Koreans intentionally threw six infantry divisions against the western flank of the perimeter and four against the northern flank. The NKPA 105th Armored Division was held in reserve. Although the 105th was armed with highly capable Soviet T-34 tank, the unit had suffered heavy losses during its advance and was downed up by only 40 working tanks. But the North Koreans continued to send fresh forces down the peninsula, and by late August they were able to commit three additional relatively fresh divisions, two against the center of the Nektong Line and one against the southern end near the coast. Walker's strategy was to conduct a mobile defense in which a small portion of one's defending forces holds a thin screen of forward strong points, while the bulk of the force is held in reserve as a counterattack element. Although a standard element of U.S. tactical doctrine today, the mobile defense did not exist in the Army's Primary Operations Manual 1950. Back then, it was considered a theoretical and highly experimental concept known as defense on a wide front. The usual defensive pattern in 1950 would have been a positional defense in which the bulk of one forces were deployed along a continuous line of fixed positions with small mobile reserve forces at key points in the rear. Walker knew that in order to be able to hold his lines, he would have to be strategic. Still lacking in subordinate headquarters, Walker was a one-man show. He continually moved by Jeep and L-19 Bird Dog light aircraft to each point on the line as a threat emerged, personally overseeing the counterattacks. Walker did, however, have a secret weapon, Eugene Landrum, Chief of Staff. Landrum had commanded the American forces that recaptured the Aleutian Island of Attu from the Japanese in World War II, and as a major general later led the 90th Infantry Division during the mutual hedgerow fighting in Normandy in July 1944. While he had been relieved of that command, and though he reverted to a colonel after the war, Walker always referred to him as General Landrum. Calm, unflappable, professional, and a team player. Landrum was an entirely different breed of officer, and Walker trusted him completely. Since a U.S. field army in 1950 was not authorized an assistant commanding general, Landrum was Walker's de facto deputy. His primary job was to keep track of all forces in Korea and conjure up the reserves to plug any holes. 
Whenever the general returned to headquarters, Walker's first question was, Andrew, how many reserves have you dug up for me today? By August 18th, the Americans and the South Koreans had established defensive positions overlooking the long, flat, narrow valley that became known as the Bowling Alley. The following day, Walker committed elements of the 23rd Infantry Regiment to reinforce the 27th. The battle dragged on for six more days and nights, and the NKPA 13th Division tried unsuccessfully to push the Americans back. The North Korean push in early August had amounted to a massive frontal attack, but a peaceful one. On August 27th, the NKPA launched another series of attacks against the same objectives, but this time, the attacks were well coordinated. Despite heavy initial losses, they were still able to field some 98,000 troops. Walker, of course, knew of General Douglas MacArthur's plan to conduct a large-scale turning movement by landing an Army Division and a Marine Division deep in the enemy's rear at Inchon. While Walker was conducting his frantic holding action along the perimeter, his staff was working equally hard on plans to break out, drive north, and link up with the Inchon Landing Force, which was designated X Corps. X Corps landed at Inchon on September 15th, and the 8th Army launched its breakout the following day, while other units on the 8th Army held the perimeter and pinned the North Koreans in place. Walker's forces had a tough go of it at first. After nearly two months of brutal combat, they were exhausted ammunition was short, and they lacked the necessary river-crossing gear. The North Korean resistance finally broke on September 22nd and started withdrawing the next day. The Battle of the Busan Premier was over. 14 North Korean divisions had all been but annihilated. Only 20,000 to 30,000 of the NKPA troops that surrounded Busan returned to North Korea, but the defenders also paid a high price. Between July 5th and September 16th, 8th Army casualties totaled to 4,280 killed in action, 12,377 wounded, 2,107 missing, and 401 confirmed captured. The Korean War was far from over, of course. After the link-up, the Allies crossed into North Korea and pushed towards the Yalu River along the Chinese border. In late October, the Chinese intervened, crossing the river and pushing the 8th Army back to the 38th parallel. The war then settled down to a bloody stalemate that dragged on until the July 1953 armistice. At Pusan, Walker had proven that a mobile defense was doable and demonstrated how to do it. As a result, the Army finally included the concept in the 1954 edition of FM 100-5, its primary operations field manual. On December 23, 1950, Walker was killed when his jeep wrecked traveling to the front lines and was promoted to a four-star rank in January 1951. Walker's stand along the Pusan perimeter allowed the Allies time to land more forces, including the General Douglas MacArthur's behind enemy lines. This defense saved South Korea from communist takeover and cemented Walker as one of the greatest field commanders. Today, Korea is known as the Forgotten War, but to the millions of South Koreans who do not have to live under oppressive dictatorship of North Korea and the soldiers who fought there, it will never be forgotten. Brown. He was in a bunker, a heavy bunker, and he said, Davis, you hold this hill with all cost, if that means your life. They just kept coming. They just walked over the dead and right into the trench, right into the trench. And that's when the hand-to-hand -hand comebacks uh, occurred. You say, well, a lot of guys are leaving this earth today. I thought that I was going to die. <laughs> be brave. Don't be a coward. Whatever's going to happen, be brave. Do your job. No, don't be afraid. That was going through my mind. Don't be afraid, now he's praying.